Good day to you. Yeah. It's not quite morning, I guess it's just barely, so I say good day to you. <laughs> if you are visiting, uh, we would like to know who you are, and if you gently raise your hand, we just have a packet of material to hand out to you, so don't be visiting the house on this day. Over here, okay. 
Marcia, Bill, looks like all on that side, I think, if I'm seeing it. Down here. Anyone else? Right, right back there, okay. Well, good. We welcome you in the name of Christ and hope that uh, your time here encourages both your spirit and your life. And of course, I'm grateful that the rest of you are here as well. So. A couple of things about Ash Wednesday, about the service here. So, uh, this is a tradition that goes back many, many centuries. Um, and actually be thankful that we do not practice it today the way it was practiced in the Middle Ages. Because in the Middle Ages, actually on Ash Wednesday, you actually stripped of all clothing, rolled in a whole pile of ashes, and then put on a burlap sack. So uh, be thankful we, we find it a little bit uh, over the centuries. But there is still offered here what is called the imposition of ashes, and it simply means uh, when the time comes, if you want to come forward, uh, I will make the sign of the cross on your forehead with ashes and also with uh, oil. Uh, that will help us to stay there a little bit and not go floating across your whole face, hopefully. Um, it's just a way of uh, reminding ourselves who we are and uh, what the season uh, begins uh, in this Lenten time. If you are not wishing to receive the position of ashes, I still encourage you to come forward anyway. Just bypass me, that's easy to do, because on both sides here, uh, we're handing out on this day lapel crosses. This is an old tradition at LCOS. Instead of giving up something for Lent, we're asking you to put on something for Lent. And so the idea is you wear this on the outside of your clothing for the next 40 days. If somebody should ask why you're wearing it, be prepared to gently explain what the cross means to you. And if they seem interested, give it to them and come back and get another one. So it's a very simple witness. Uh, but it's a way that you can be involved in, 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 uh, in, in witnessing to the faith. The other thing is a, a, book, a Lenten devotional booklet here. And so we encourage you to take one of these along uh, and to include that in your daily prayer time. Again, during the season of Lent, all these things are meant to just help you uh, keep in mind, again, who we are and what we're about and, more importantly, what God is about. After the service today, there is uh, a luncheon, and so we encourage you to come and share some time with your brothers and sisters in Christ uh, and to enjoy some time together. So there's no processional hymn, because that's the nature of the service. If you are able, I invite you to rise as we begin. <coughs> We make our strong beginning in the name of God, the Father, the, God, the Son, and of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join together in the opening prayer. Almighty God, in whose name we gather, let your Spirit provide us with an honest awareness of the brokenness we try to deny. Heal our hurting with the forgiveness made possible by Christ's cross. Amen. We join in an opening litany of confession using the words of Psalm 51. Be merciful to us, O God, because of your constant love. Because of your great mercy, wipe away our sin. We have sinned against you and done what is not right. You are right in judging us and justified in condemning us. Remove our sin. within us. Do not take away your Holy Spirit from us. Give to us the joy of your saving grace. Help us to turn back to you and to praise you. You may be seated for the imposition. Jerry, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen. Marcia, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return.
My brothers and sisters, know and believe that in Jesus Christ you are forgiven for what was in your life and you are free to live as a redeemed child of God. Amen. <laughs> The readings for this Ash Wednesday take us all the way back to the Old Testament, to the prophecy of Joel. And Joel was writing to the remnant of Israel, of the tribe of Judah, as they have finally gotten out of 50 years of captivity, and they are now back in the ruins of Jerusalem. But they are still going through some very anxious times. And so this is what he, read, what he writes uh, to them. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Lend your heart, and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. This is the word of the Lord. If you are able, I invite you to rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> These are some of Jesus' words still in the Sermon on the Mount. This is Matthew chapter 6. Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We confess our faith in this Christ in the words of the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing. <laughs> grace, God's mercy, and God's kind of peace rest deep, deep in your hearts, deep in your minds, this day and always because of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
In truth, the world has never known quite what to do with Christians. Our core of faith beliefs often put us in direct contrary direction from what all society dictates is the recipe for success in this world. And so as such, uh, over the 20 centuries that we've been around, sometimes we've been persecuted, sometimes there are still are, sometimes we've been ignored, sometimes we've been ridiculed, and sometimes people trying to be kind just label Christians as different. Well, probably nowhere more so does that whole idea of being different come to term on this day, Ash Wednesday. We are sitting here, having just been anointed with ashes made from last Palm Sunday's palms, following a tradition that's been going on for a very long time. I'm sure for most people outside of these walls, this is indeed a very strange tradition and custom. What does it mean? Well, maybe the words of Joel can help us understand what Ash Wednesday is meant to help us remember. When Joel first writes these words, he's writing to what's left of the once proud nation of Israel. There's only one tribe, and only a portion of that tribe left. They're standing there in the ruins of Jerusalem, and to be sure, they are no longer in exile, but they're still under foreign oppression, because Persia has simply replaced Babylon as their new landlord. And so they're sitting there, look at the rocks and the ruin around them, very uncertain about their future, about where any of this is going to go, and also still consumed by the harsh memories of all that had happened 50 years before that put them into captivity in the first place. And as a way of trying to get them to refocus, if you will, Joel says simply, Return to the Lord with all your heart. Do not tear up your clothes in sorrow and grieving, but tear up your heart instead, because that's what God is looking for. Well, we sit here as American Christians, uh, thankfully still not under any overt persecution. But to be sure, we're still sort of the odd man out, and we're still living in uncertain times. Every day we are barraged by the internet that only too eagerly tells us what we need to be careful about, what we need to watch out for, what we're running out of. The anxiety level on the internet is superbly high. And yet if we're honest, every one of us crawls into our bed at night, still looking at the scars on our deepest heart wondering why things happened the way they did in our lives, leaving us with far more questions and answers. And so I think in their own way, Joel's words are still applicable to us. Still, the declaration, return to the Lord with all your heart. On Ash Wednesday, we help to make that kind of return being anointed with the sign of ashes seems very strange, and yet it is a symbol of our mortality. And the words that I just said out loud to each one of you that came up here, and which were then said to me, are words that our society and our inner heart don't really want to hear. Remember, you are dust. And to dust you shall return. There's no convenient shade of gray in that statement. It's pretty direct. It's pretty blunt. And so we participate in this Ash Wednesday tradition not because we are morbid, not because we are overwhelmed with fear, but because it is one step that leads us to honesty. 
And we can sit here and look at ourselves and look at each other and recognize finally how fragile we are, how temporary life is. That's a beginning step of returning. Because when you realize those things, it leads you to a genuine humility. And out of that humility, finally begins a deep gratitude. Simply being thankful for who God has made you to be and what it is that God has blessed you with in this brief moment that we call life. And out of that humility and out of that gratitude finally comes a peace to the restless heart. But that journey of returning is not a simple one. Not any more in our time than it was in the time when Joel was writing. Because the human heart is easily distracted. Encouraged by the voices around us, that little pesky voice inside of us keeps insisting that we're in control. It keeps telling us that we deserve to be in control. That somehow we're entitled to live life the way we think it should be lived. And that we should be getting the things that we think we need and that we deserve. Whether they're physical things or whether they're emotional things, controlling the relationships, the heart is restless and still keeps demanding that we're it and that life is all about us. But the illusion of control about anything is just that, an illusion. We're not in control of most of what happens to us in life. As you probably heard me say, ad nauseum, God is driving the bus, we're hanging on the bumper. <laughs> we don't know where any of this is going. We think we have it all plotted out, and then it is that life steps in and says, surprise. I think about Martin Luther, who put up with a lot in his life. If you've never read anything about Luther, do so. He's a complicated guy, complex guy, but a guy who was firmly committed to the faith. And finally on his dying bed, these are his last words. We are all beggars, everyone. And having said that, he died at peace. Because the thing is that when we do the return trip to God with all of our heart, not just faith and hope, and we move from humility to gratitude to peace, we discover with joyful delight the truth of Joel's words. For the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. We sit here knowing a truth that Joel could have never imagined. And while we begin today in the solemnity of Ash Wednesday, we know how the story ends. We start this journey with ashes. We'll end it with hallelujahs. Because when we turn to God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, we discover to our delight that God is not sitting there waiting to club us or judge us or exclude us, but actually waiting to embrace us in the outstretched arms of love. And those arms outstretched on the cross are finally would give us the unique identity of being beloved and redeemed, an identity that takes us a lifetime to figure out the depth of what those words mean. And when we finally can accept what God wants us to be, what God has in mind for us, well, then it is we can begin to put aside the critical and fearful voices of the world around us and also finally silence that pesky, whiny voice inside of us and finally be free. We usually do our Ash Wednesday services at night, and when we do so, of course, we all sit here and then we go home and hurriedly wash off the ashes. <laughs> but this year, doing the service at noon, I 
I'd like to challenge you to wear the ashes for the rest of the day. And wear them where people can see you. And be thankful and be wondering how you might answer if they should find the courage to ask, why are you wearing ashes? That's so silly. If someone were to ask me, I think I would answer something like, this reminds me there is a God and I'm not it. <laughs> that also reminds me that because of Christ, I can be humble, I can be grateful, and I can be at peace. And may that it be in your heart and in mine. Amen. Amen. <laughs> for prayer if you are able. God of grace and mercy, we pause in the midst of the day, mindful of the journey that we are on, and mindful that your graceful presence is always around us. Be with us as we step now into the season of Lent, the season of reflection, the season of honesty, the season of realization. Bless us, O oh God, again, to come through this journey, realizing again whose we are, and why we are, and where we are going. And may this journey encourage and strengthen us in our faithfulness and in our servanthood with compassionate hearts for you, Lord, in your mercy. Yes. We pray, God, for the church throughout the world as it unites in celebrating Ash Wednesday on this day, as it unites in marking the beginning of this journey of Lent. May all of the churches be guided by your spirit and grace and be encouraged by your gospel hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for this congregation that your spirit would fall upon it and that it would renew and encourage and strengthen each member of this faith family to realize again their calling and their baptism and what it means to be a believer. Bless them, O Lord, and encourage them for your sake and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for many people in our minds and hearts, uh, and we are bold enough, each of us, to say those names out loud on this day. And so we are bold to pray for. Whoever these people are to us and wherever they are in this moment, may your grace find them. May they know on this day that they are loved and redeemed and beloved in your name. And may they feel and know our love for certainty as well. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the restless world around us. So much conflict, so much tension. It is hard to imagine the things that people go through. We also pray, for Lord, for our own restless country and all of the uncertainty that is here. 
We ask your grace and your spirit to be with those whom we have elected to serve us. May you guide them with wisdom, with integrity, with honor, and with hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And finally, God bless us as we come to your table again in this moment to remember the gracious gift you gave to us so many centuries ago. This holy mystery of bread and wine and body and blood. May this indeed touch us, O Lord, and renew faith within us. May it allow us to know for certain that we are redeemed and that we are forgiven in your sight. Let us leave this place stronger in faith than when we came in, so that we might be your signpost of grace and reconciliation in the world that you have called us to be in. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we join together as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I encourage you to share a sign of that peace with each other. <clears throat>
And may indeed the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ evermore strengthen and preserve you in faith until your life everlasting depart in his peace and for his service. Amen. Amen. We rise. <coughs> <coughs> Let us put on the new self, which is created in God's likeness and reveals itself in a life that is holy. Let us not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and not tear down. Let us get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. Let there be no more shouting, insults, or hateful feelings within us. Let us be kind and tenderhearted to one another, forgiving one another as Christ has given us. Amen and Amen. And may indeed the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and always. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.